Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, our final night of the festival. And uh, we've heard so much great music this weekend, and tonight I think you'll be uh, especially happy with, because uh, we got a big night of music tonight, and a lot of wonderful things coming. So um, we're going to have a, obviously we'll have an intermission after this set. And then uh, we'll have the final concert, and I believe there might be a really, really short intermission in between that one as well. And all of that would be a good time. We'll have to check, but as you know, Merrill J. very generously is donating half the proceeds to the Jazz Institute of the Carl Saunders original painting that um, that she did. And so the bidding is uh, the bidding's up, the, you know, getting up there now, and she's still taking bids, and I imagine she will be there through the, at least this first intermission. So if you're in the least bit interested in that, you should just stop by and make your bid or, and uh, see how that's working out. But uh, we appreciate that. As a matter of fact, you know, over the years, there have been, you know, just countless numbers of people who have helped to make these events happen. I mean, there have been so many different volunteers and people associated with the events and people that have, uh, have uh, made all that, you know, that, that have, that have helped in many, many different ways. And uh, we certainly very much appreciate it. I know you appreciate it as well. And uh, it's wonderful that that's happened. Now, one of the people who has uh, been here with us uh, pretty much uh, the entire time, that is um, someone that you've seen almost at every event out in the lobby. And uh, that's Herman Moreno selling uh, the CDs. And Herman does much more other than just the CDs that he sells, uh, that he puts together for you, knowing things that you'd like to get a hold of. He also handles all the sales for all the artists and all the musicians. And all those uh, artist sales are important. They're important to the musicians. You know, it's an extra source of income when they play events and they're able to sell their CDs. So, but somebody has to handle all that. And that's Herman Moreno. So Herman's right here. Big hand for Herman. that have 
have uh, that uh, that help you at the registration table and the volunteers and all. And these are people who are passionate about the music, and these are people who are here because they love the music and they want to be here. They want to be the part of want to be part of something and helping to make something significant happen. So we've been fortunate over the years to have so many people like that, and uh, we really truly truly appreciate it. Kicking things off tonight as we. Um, get to the final part of our celebration of the creative world of Stan Kenton. You know, we think of the Stan Kenton legacy not only as the music, well, it's all those pieces together that you've seen this weekend. It's the music, the composers and the arrangers that wrote the music, and all the musicians who played in the band, all the young musicians who attended the camps, and the young musicians who were affected by that many generations down the line. And you see that continue on to today of the impact that that has had. So the legacy is about the musicians. It's about the alumni. It's about the music. And that's what we've tried to present through the years. That's what we've tried to present going all the way back to the original event in 1991 with Back to Balboa. So we also like to not only at the events, not only just play the original Kent music, which of course we've uh, done a lot, but we also like to showcase some of the musicians who came out of the Kent legacy and uh, what they're doing with their own music. And tonight is a wonderful example of that, of someone coming out of the Stan Kent Orchestra, became very, very successful, uh, both as a, as a player and as a writer, and uh, his conception of his own large orchestra, you see behind me. And so you see, and you see the legacy being continued, and you see it with the Kim Richmond Concert Jazz Orchestra. Kim Richmond. Thank you very much, Ken. I'm going to preface this uh, first selection because you've heard it almost every day, well, every day, artistry and rhythm. And uh, this might be the last time you hear it today, but uh, can't say for tomorrow. But this is an uh, example of using all the uh, identifiable parts of, of uh, artistry and rhythm, and yet having them sound different and in a different order. We've got all the woodwinds here. We've got bassoon, English horn, we've got flute, oboe, clarinet, and of course we have the French horns and tuba down there at the end. So this is my version of artistry in rhythm in 5-4. <laughs>
70, he said, uh, I, excuse me, 67, 67. When I was in the band, uh, uh, you know, Stan, uh, let, his, let his views be known. Let's put it that way. And he had a lot of decisive prejudices, maybe, okay? And uh, about instruments and about people. And he changed those later in the 70s. But uh, he didn't like to have woodwinds. He didn't like woodwinds, you know. He thought they were sissy instruments. <laughs> they don't play loud enough. <laughs> I had my soprano along on the tour, and uh, I played uh, intermission riff on a solo, tenor solo on soprano. And he, he, after about three days, he said, you might as well leave the soprano in the car. <laughs> or in the bus, okay? So, so I did. So he didn't like the soprano that, that well. And he didn't have women in the band at that time. Believe that? And that all changed, too. So uh, he had some very good players that were the feminine and, uh, gender, so that was that was really great. So we have what we're doing here is we're kind of well, we're we're, we're kind of uh, guessing where Stan might have gone from there, and uh, so that's, that's one of the things that's, that's the way I put that together. Now I want to mention one other thing to you I haven't talked about before, and that's a tire. A tire. You know what a tire is? It's not going not on a car. It's how you dress. And most of the time, uh, band leaders want everybody to dress in black. You know, my wife hates that, but she doesn't think I look good in black. But anyway, uh, and, and so I'm, and, and the reason for that, of course, is he wants, the band leader wants to have everybody look alike so that they look like they're one unit, right? Well, I go the other way around. I like to have everybody dress in individual colors. And I don't care what they are, but uh, they should look nice, of course. It's not, uh, you know, uh, jeans and t-shirts, but, uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be ties either, but uh, anyway, that's, that's the way I go. And the reason is because all of us are individuals, and I don't want to forget that. We're not one person operating the same way. We are individuals coming together, and you can hear that it's forming an, an alliance. You can hear what it's doing. So I, th I think that needs to be emphasized. So I'm not objecting to wearing black, really, but uh, that's, that's why we have a lot of colors in the band, and uh, hopefully uh, most of them are black. <laughs> but I mean, they're, they come from some other bands, I guess. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do an original now, and uh, in a moment we're gonna have a, a guest uh, that uh, I, I dearly enjoy, and Clay Jenkins will be here to play a solo on this. Uh, this, is, this number next is called Adjustments. That comes, the title comes from my wife, because she says every once in a while, uh, we have to make some adjustments here. <laughs>
neophonic uh, attitude. You know, uh, Stan had a, a, a neophonic orchestra for a few years. How many years? Three years or something. Like that. About three years. Yeah, in, in L.A. here, and uh, I got to sub in a rehearsal one time. But other than that, I was uh, on the outside. But anyway, it, I was much a fan of it, and I, I have recordings and so forth that they did. And uh, it was an orchestra with strings and the whole whole shebang, you know. But uh, I'm as close to that as I can get in instrumentation. We can't afford the uh, 50 strings. <laughs> so, but this next and last tune is going to be something that you may like or may not like. But it's the direction I'm going, and uh, <laughs> whether that's good or bad. Uh, it's a little outrageous, and I, I had it, did it in a period of my life where I was going through some outrageous stuff. So, uh, you know, that's, I'll go into that. In a but uh, this is called, aptly, it's called Crazy Ladies. I'm still married. <laughs>